Hi, welcome to my channel. Uh, I want to share my loading bar that is implemented in shell script with you. Uh, so let's get started. Okay, so first of all let's put something on the screen. Uh, if I run the command echo uh, multiple times, uh, you can see that each time there's a new line automatically inserted. Uh, but what if we run printf instead? Uh, so printf okay uh, you can see that there's no uh, new line inserted automatically uh, so if we want a new line we need to specify it manually uh, like so personally I like printf more because it's more predictable than echo and for example I use zsh for my shell and the echo command behaves differently here than it does for example in bash Okay, so let's create a new file and let's give it a run permission and let's edit its contents. First of all, let's make sure that it's a bin sh script, so that it means it has to be POSIX compliant. And then I'll just copy this while loop uh, here. If you look here, we're using this uh, count variable that's initialized to zero and each time that we're going through the loop we're waiting half a second uh, then we're adding one to this count variable and if you don't know this is the shell syntax for uh, simple math operations okay we can lose this dollar sign uh, and then we're printing the o character each time and uh, this is repeated as long as the count variable is less than the max count variable. So let's just change this to 5 uh, for now. Okay, let's save. And if we go into a new terminal and run this script, you can see that we have a simple loading bar already. But it isn't really useful because we don't know how much more time uh, the process is going to take to complete. So obviously we need some simple arithmetic to figure out at what percentage we currently are. Let's get one thing right out of the way. Uh, we can't use decimal numbers in shell script. Uh, well, there is a way, but we won't go there in this video. For example, if I try to divide a number by a bigger number you can see that we get a zero because it's rounded up like an integer but you know obviously we need to divide with bigger numbers because that's just how percentages work and there is a hack for this and it's basically a fixed point number to use it we basically just use a bigger number and you know and add an imaginary decimal point to it. For example, we want two decimal places. Uh, so let's say that 100 is equal to 1. Our imaginary decimal point is going to be here. If we apply that to this equation right here, we just add two zeros to 300. That means that 3 divided by 5 is 0 0.6, as you can see here. Okay, so let's finally get back to our example script. Uh, let's just first fix that intent here and we said that we need a maximum number of loop iterations in order to get the current percentage. Let's implement this in the form of two functions. The first, as the name says, is going to be the init function. Here we'll calculate the bar step and other initialization stuff and the second one is going to be called inside the loop so each time a loop iterates we're going to call this update function let's move the printf statement here okay so let me just paste in a little code snippet I got okay so we will need a maximum number passed to our init function so we can calculate the percentage out of it so we said that our numbers will be multiplied by a hundred and one percent is the maximum number divided by a hundred 
So therefore, uh, our percent is equal to the maximum number that's going to be passed to the function. We call the update function each time, so uh, we need to have a sort of uh, count variable that we iterate uh, each each time that the function is called. Uh, we do that here, and we also must initialize this variable some somewhere uh, outside this function, and we just do that here in the init function. Okay, we uh, iterate the count each time the update is called, and then each time the function is called, we divide the bar count variable uh, with the uh, percent variable, and if the the remainder is less than 100, or in our case we know that this is 1, uh, then we add a symbol to our bar. So uh, that our bar is going to uh, increment one step. And uh, lastly we uh, print out the bar. Uh, we print the bar here and then we also print the uh, bar count divided by the percentages here uh, so that we uh, also get a percentage at which we are currently at. In our case we add 500 uh, as a maximum uh, number to our init function and we also need to pass the same number uh, here uh, into our test loop and uh, of course we need to call the update function uh, each time. Okay, so now if we uh, go to another terminal and we run this script again. Okay, now we see that we already have a, a loading bar, but uh, of course we don't really mean something like this when we say loading bar. Uh, we mean something that's uh, compact and, you know, in one line. Uh, we don't want a new line printed after uh, each time that our, our bar is iterated. In order to uh, have the bar printed in the same line, uh, we use something that's called uh, an escape sequence or escape sequences. And uh, let's just, uh, I'll just print out uh, something that I have prepared. Okay, so now if you look, take a look, uh, in our init function, uh, we use this escape uh, sequence and this means that the cursor location is going to be saved at this point. And if we come down here, uh, each time the uh, update function is called and the printf uh, program or uh, statement is going to be called, uh, we first of all restore that cursor position. Uh, with this escape sequence. And then we print a space symbol and then we print our bar, uh, which is this here. And then we restore the <coughs> we restore the cursor location again and we return to the beginning uh, to the same location we saved here, so to the very beginning. And then we use this escape sequence uh, to move uh, 100 spaces to the right. And 100 spaces because uh, we know that our bar is uh, 100 spaces wide. Uh, and then we print the percentage uh, like we did before here. Okay, so let's save this and let's run our script again. So as you can see we have a simple loading bar. Okay this is just a glitch because uh, the terminal isn't wide enough. 
but as you can see the loading bar is working pretty much perfect now okay so now that we have a fully functional loading bar that we can add to any uh, script uh, let's take a look at the complete example that uh, I've prepared before so this loading bar is called uh, schload <laughs> because uh, of the sh like a sh loading bar and uh, same as before we have uh, the init or setup function and then the update function so we call the uh, setup function uh, one time uh, and the majority of work is done here and then we uh, call the update function uh, each time in our, our loop I also have an example here uh, and we just source the contents of our uh, previous file here and we have uh, okay we can just ignore all this but uh, basically we uh, call this setup function and we pass the max count uh, variable here and we also have our uh, custom loading symbol uh, but you know that's just uh, for uh, eye candy or something like that if you will um, and then we have our while loop as before uh, we iterate the counter and then we call the update function here so basically we just call the uh, setup function outside the loop and the update function each time the the loop uh, iterates and Same as before we need to pass the same maximum number to the uh, loading bar setup function as we do to our uh, our loop for the purposes of uh, simplicity, let's just uh, get rid of this uh, a for loop uh, so that we'll only have uh, one one simple uh, loading bar and let's make the uh, count variable like 500 something like 500 let's also change the loading symbol uh, to I don't know let's just say O okay so now we basically have the same example as uh, before uh, so now let's run this again okay you can see that we have a uh, the same loading bar as before and let's take a look at some of the other features that I added to uh, my implementation so here in this setup function you can see that uh, I also have two loops and the first loop is because uh, we first of all set the max width and then depending on the terminal size we uh, divide the width by by two so we split the bar width in half uh, depending on the terminal size the second loop uh, serves in cases that the max count variable is less than the bar width uh, so we can demonstrate that in our previous example uh, if we uh, let's say uh, pass 50 to our init function here uh, and also here of course uh, and in this case uh, our max count variable is 50 and our bar width is 100 if you remember from before okay so let's save this and uh, let's run this script uh, and you can see that the bar didn't load all the way till the end okay so uh, what this function does is basically uh, uh, compensates this uh, mistake by adding uh, one more character each time uh, I hope that this makes sense so for example if uh, 
uh, in this case that the that we have uh, exactly half the bar width, uh, we would use two characters to fill uh, this. So basically, if I change this to uh, one more symbol here and run this script again, uh, we now print two characters at the time. So now we have a complete loading bar. Let's just demonstrate the use of these two functions. Uh, I'll just resize my terminal window. We'll edit the example function same as before. We'll set that to, let's say, 30. Let's save that. And let's run that uh, example again. So as you can see, the bar loads all the way to the end. And it also compensates for the uh, the width. Uh, we can also make the window much much smaller again, and as you can see, the bar is smaller now. Okay, I found. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, you can check the full script on my GitHub. Uh, the link is in the video description. And if you find this uh, video helpful please consider subscribing and thanks again for watching and goodbye.